Hello guys and dolls, welcome back. We are at Form Next 2025. This is our fourth year here at the largest 3D printing and additive manufacturing show in Europe. We've got lots of exciting stuff coming up. Stay tuned, see you in the next video. So a quick pause from the video to say a thank you to the sponsor of this video and of the channel, Frozen, and talk about the printer that we've been playing with a lot recently, the Frozen Mega 8KS. The best way I can describe this thing is it just makes big resin projects feel normal. You know when you see a huge model on Etsy or a full-size army and you think, oh, that'd be really good. I definitely can't do that on my machine. That is all fixed by the sheer size and volume you can print with with this machine. The build plate is huge, so we've been doing full trays of minis all in one go, big terrain pieces, chunky props, and it has handled it without any drama. You set it up, you slice it, you hit print, and it just gets on with it. It's really nice not having to chop everything into tiny sections, make inorganic cuts, it, just to try and make it fit. And even though it's a big machine, you still retain all of that crisp 8K detail that you want from resin. This thing does textures on cloaks, little rivets, tiny text, and it all shows up nice and clean, nice and crisp. On the table, in a camera, it just looks sharp. There are some good quality of life bits on this as well. The lid design makes it nice and easy to fit it in normal spaces. The whole printer feels like it's built for people who are actually using it every day and not just for a spec sheet and a bunch of flashy marketing things. If you're thinking about stepping up to a larger resin printer, whether it's for batch commissioning, full printing armies, or just finally doing one giant centerpiece model that you've been putting off, you have to look at the Mega 8KS. Use the link in the video description and a big thanks to Frozen for supporting the channel. Now let's get back to the video. <coughs> Hello guys and dolls, welcome back. We are at FiberSeek taking a look at their new machine. Talk to me a little bit about FiberSeek as a company to begin with and then we'll talk about what this machine actually does. Hey, hey guys, uh, I'm Ryan, the CEO at FiberSeek. Yeah. So Fabricic is a company about a new brand, new company, but we are, uh, had a history of like, uh, from an print as one of the first company who like come up with like continuous fiber printing technology about 10 years ago. So from this year, we decided to make a huge leap from the B2B world to B2C to, you know, democratize this like continuous fiber technology to the desktop 3D printing. So you can print like aerospace grade super strong parts right as a desktop with this like beast with a price point of only like two, three thousand dollars. So let's just be clear about how much of a leap that is, right? Yeah. A, a, a build volume of this size in a commercial grade printer mm -hmm. is yeah. like 13 to 20,000 normally. Yeah. And yeah. that would still be considered an entry level commercial right, machine. Right. At yeah. That point. A, a fiber, yes. Yeah. Um, and you guys have come in yeah. at, uh, at a, a sheer price. A kid Kickstarter right now. The, yeah, two thousand and six hundred ninety-nine dollars for the machine, and more importantly, the carbon fiber spool, which used to be hundreds of dollars per spool. Yeah. Now it's only forty-nine dollars per spool. Okay, so talk to me a little bit about how this is working, right? So the way we, the way consumers have had um, sort of glass fiber or carbon fiber filament mm -hmm. up until now is that it's all in one material. So it's right, just right. one spool. It's, it's very linear. It's yeah. very, it's very linear um, fiber reinforcement. Uh -huh. It, it kind of helps a little bit with compression, but it doesn't yeah, really yeah. add a lot of mechanical strength. It's no, kind of not just, at all. It's, it's just, just a like a carbon fiber, glass fiber, carbon fiber greens. Yeah. You no know, particles like mixed with uh, yeah. the uh, so FDM filament. That isn't what you guys are doing. No, right? that's like this. You can still bend it easily. So you can. Yeah. Okay. Like chopped fiber, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you guys are you guys are a dual nozzle where you are mixing mm -hmm. a fiber spool with 
a, a with different materials. So right, right. what material? So first of all, you're doing carbon fiber reinforcement, uh -huh. and you're looking to also do glass fiber yeah. reinforcement. We're not restricted to fibers, all kind of fiber. Okay. We can print as long as it's, we make it as a continuous. Fibers. Okay. And then um, and then you have you have materials that sit on the back. So. Right. What are the what the material what's the material compatibility? So what are we looking at? Nylons so, and nylons, just DLA, PETG. For high temperatures, since we have wearing, uh, have like heated chamber, so it can go up to like PPS, PPA, CF. Yeah, so you're so not you restricted to plastics. Okay, so what's yeah. the what's the max temperature that the hot end will go to? Uh, three hundred and fifty from on the hot end. So at three fifty, yeah, the only thing you can't do is PETK mm -hmm. and PSU. Right. That's it. Yeah. But you wouldn't do those with Not this type this. of material no, no. anyway. Yeah. So, and they're, and to be clear, they're, they're really highly specialized printers. They're basically just stuff that prints inside of an oven that happens right. to have a 3D yeah, printer. Right, yeah, 200 like, that's, that's, that's not, not going to yeah. be on entry level. Um, so what kind of post-processing do you have to do with this? So No, no per None at it all. It just works as a regular like FDM printer. So you just like plug and play, click, and it runs so automatic no, no annealing, calibration, none nothing. of that. Just you print no. it, it's done, yeah. the part's finished, yeah. and then you have... You have a super strong part, you know. On the outside, you have plastics just as FDM. On the inside, you have like continuous carbon fiber as a rebar to, you know, it's, it's not steel rebar, but it's like a carbon fiber rebar to reinforce the whole, whole structure. So all that reinforcement and is in... Try to bend it. So, let me see. I'm really, I, I want to be clear, like I'm, ah, yeah, yeah all right, yeah, okay. Yeah. So you're doing that in the X and Y, right? Yeah, because yeah. there's no way to do continuous fiber between the Zs. So. Not it, on this one, yeah. That's yeah. more like trivia, you have to go like non-planner, but yeah. yeah. So. But for this one, it goes by layer by layer. But yeah. at least for the X, Y, it could like reinforce it like perfectly. So talk to me about slices then, because obviously what you're dealing with here is a, a pretty unique setup of pretty unique dual mm. materials. So are you running your own slicer? Have you sort of, are you, are you building off another platform? What are, what are slices? So you know, the hardest part to develop the systems is actually the slicer. It's harder than developing the machine because uh, it's about how you plan the carbon fiber path. You know, it doesn't work as like FDM, which you, you're more flexible with the task because it's a melted yeah. material. But carbon fiber, you want the, you know, uh, complete strength, right? You want a continuous fiber. It doesn't melt. You have to go certain angles in certain paths. So you have to optimize the carbon fiber path and you have to plan it carefully. And that's a lot of algorithms. And there's definitely no open source, like, you know, uh, slicing software for that. Yeah. So we have to develop this like front ground up. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. And so, so we so, have our own so, slicer. So it's your own slicer, right. your own stuff. So is non-planar something that's in the roadmap? I mean, I guess it's technically possible, right? It's technically possible, yeah. It's just, is that something that you guys uh -huh. are looking to do? Because yeah. the, the, the issue that a lot of people have with, with, with any fiber reinforcement is the only way it really reinforces the whole part right. is if it's if it it able to cross-stitch Mm -hmm. and, and, and help with layer adhesion as right, well as right. helping with just material and yeah, everything yeah. else. So are you, are you is, 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 is non-planar in the roadmap? I cannot say much, but that's like a whole different algorithm, different systems right. that we'll see. Okay, yeah. all right, fair enough. So price point, you've already said, 2,699 yeah. is, the, is the Kickstarter price for the machine. Yeah. Is that shipped or is that base machine and then shipping's on top? Uh, yeah, it's including shipping. It's including, yeah, including shipping. shipping worldwide. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Um, and then we've got, and then we've got the filament as well that you're selling. So you're yeah. selling that fiber reinforcement for right, right. fifty dollars. Fifty dollars a spool. Yeah. Five hundred meters, so five hundred grams normally. Um, how long is that actually going to last? You could this very light. Yeah. You know. You don't have to use a whole lot of fiber to reinforce a part, just okay. like a few line, lines. Right. It could already do the job. Okay. You know, even sometimes if you feel a small part, even like 0.2 gram of a carbon fiber can increase like two, three times of the strength. I'm not okay. kidding. So, so, so one spool, it can be reinforced like up to like three to five, you know, uh, spools of like regular filaments. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. can you, so in the slicer, can you change the density of like how much fiber you're reinforcing? So we could have you, a slide bar. Right. So about like how much strength you want to give it to your part. Like, you know, 
lower, medium, higher, yeah. like very high. Okay. And then you just have to pick the level of magnitude of strength you want to really add it. Okay. Yeah, it's intuitive. And then the slides are going to do the planning. So then talk to me about applications here. So this isn't for everybody, right? There's not, not everybody needs glass fiber reinforced prints. Well, every That's engineer a, needs it, definitely. Every engineer needs it, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, We've obviously you've got examples of things here at the moment where you've got sort of industrial grade parts right, and you've right. got a compound bow up there and things like that. But talk to me about some of the applications of the technology. Who, who's who's this targeting? What the kind of things? I think to make it for? easy, you know, for anyone who wants strong parts and you don't want to mess up with metal, you print with composites. Okay. You're right. So it doesn't matter. It's like a, a perfect application could be drones, you know, EVTOs. And for cars, it doesn't matter, it's a, like toy cars, like RC cars, you know, karting cars, yeah. race car, or even a, your old car, which needs a spare parts and you cannot find it, you know. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Well, look, check out the Kickstarter now. It's still live, right? Yeah, You've yeah, just we just launched your... it like two days ago. We I mean, already almost at like two million and we keep going, so. So already hit two million in pre-orders. Almost, yeah. Almost two million in pre-orders. Um, an amazing achievement, very interesting machine. Thank you very much for joining Thank you. us. Catch you on the next video. Thanks. Brilliant. Thanks yeah. so much. Thank you. Well done. Yeah.